Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to share with you a beautiful mirror glaze recipe that is perfect for beginners because it's very forgiving. And it only consists of five ingredients and some water. So I have them all lined up here. And this is a very basic mirror glaze which you can tailor to your liking. You can add some food coloring, etc. So let's start by putting the glucose, sugar and some water in a pot. And we're going to cook this until it reaches about 103 Celsius. And there are some recipes without glucose. I know it's hard for some people to find it, but this is a great way to make mirror glaze as a beginner because glucose gives it that nice texture that will hold in place onto the cake. So if you want to start with a recipe, I recommend that you use this one and experiment later on. So I put all my glucose in the pot. It's kind of hard to get it all out. And while the glucose mixture is cooking, I'm going to bloom my gelatin. Blooming just means hydrating gelatin powder with water. And there's a crazy amount of science behind how gelatin has to be bloomed. So I will not go into that detail, but I will make a video about this because it's super interesting. But for now, just focus on making sure that all of those gelatin powder particles are covered with water. So you don't want to see any lumps here. And once your glucose mixture has come to temperature, then we can proceed with the rest of the ingredients. So while it's still hot, I'm going to add my white chocolate. And we're going to let that residual heat do all the work and melt the chocolate. You want to stir occasionally just to make sure that it's melting evenly. And white chocolate is a bit stubborn to melt fully without mixing it too much. So don't be afraid to get in there. Once it's sort of fully melted, we can proceed and add our condensed milk. And this already has a certain texture, as you can see from the glucose, the condensed milk, the white chocolate but also the flavor. You have condensed milk and white chocolate dominating the flavor. So you can imagine what this tastes like. And for once, I find that the recipe doesn't really need any added vanilla flavor. I know some people like to do that, but I think it doesn't really need it. But if you wanted to, you can add it at this point. So my gelatin powder has hydrated fully, as you can see here. So I'm ready to add this to my glucose mix. Now I can do this because I know that it's still quite hot and that's going to help melt the gelatin mass. If you were to add this to a cool mixture, then you would not be able to incorporate it. You would have to firstly melt the gelatin mass and then add that to your liquids. So just a fun tip for you. And now we're ready to sort of pass this through a sieve just to make sure that it's completely lump free. And this is a great insurance policy that you mixed all of your ingredients correctly. Every single ingredient has a purpose. So it's important that we mix this properly and that we don't have any lumps of, say, gelatin, for example. I can see some bits of white chocolate, but that's normal. And at this point, I'm happy to just blend this in. Now, if you wanted a white chocolate looking mirror glaze, then you're almost done. But Valentine's Day is coming up. So I thought I'd make a really nice and vibrant red for my mirror glaze. So I'm adding some food coloring and powder form. You can also use gel. And now we're ready to blend this all together and an immersion blender is the tool of choice here in most mirror glaze recipes because you want to mix the glaze in such a way that you don't add a lot of air bubbles. 
air bubbles are a huge enemy of mirror glazing because of the texture of the mirror glaze itself. If you have air bubbles, then it's a bit harder to get rid of them because the texture kind of holds them in place and if you try to pop them, you might end up with some flaws on your glaze. So try to avoid those. I like to finish mixing with a spatula because I can sort of see how many bubbles I have in there. And you can see in the video I have a couple, but that's fine. This is still a bit warm, so it has to sit and rest. And that's why it's also important to let it cool completely. It sort of gets rid of all those air bubbles for free. So while that's happening, I'm preparing my glazing station. I have a nice tray here that will collect all the drippings and a stand for my cake. The stand should be smaller than the cake itself so that the glaze can drip freely onto the tray. Now here I have a mousse cake that it's been in the freezer for about six hours. It should be rock solid and I'm using a silicon form in a cute heart shape. Now it's a bit tricky to get this out of the silicon form without damaging it. So be very gentle, although try to do it in quick motions. You have to sort of peel it off of the cake. And it's really exciting when it comes out in one piece. And I have to say this mold was really, really good. And I'm just cleaning up a little bit of the mousse leftovers off of the cake and I have my offset spatula which is helping me lift the cake so we can neatly place it on top of the cake stand that we fashioned. So this is ready for glazing. Now let me quickly show you the glaze. You see the air bubbles are gone basically. Now I just need to check the temperature. So I have 39 Celsius and that's not quite there yet. So we continue to wait and while we wait, we put the cake back in the freezer. We don't want to lose that temperature. This is key for the mirror glaze technique to work. Now, like I said, you want to make sure the surface is nice and smooth before you glaze. So my mirror glaze is ready. It has the right temperature between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius and away we go. So I start in the center and quickly move towards the edges. You want to move the glaze around the cake as much as possible. One trick here is that I've made enough glaze to cover this cake plus a little extra because Sometimes I find that we tend to focus in one area while the other one is still left uncovered. So in that case, you don't want to be running out of glaze because you've overglazed the side over another. So just bear that in mind. And I'm showing you the real time drip here so that you can see how quickly it sets. If it's too runny, it might start falling off of the cake side. So that's the problem with mirror glazing. And that's why I recommend this recipe for beginners because it's a little bit thicker and it's not quite as problematic as those really liquidy ones. So I'm just standing here watching the glaze drip off of the cake for about one or two minutes. And after that, I start going in with a small spatula. Now I have a really great tip to give you today. When you're pulling the glaze from the bottom, you might pull a little too much so that the cake comes out. So I recommend that you push inwards rather than outwards, as you can see here. Now, when you're done cleaning the cake from the bottom, you can use that offset spatula that we had before just to try to lift the cake off of the stand. The cake is frozen, so it might get stuck to the stand a little bit. So you might have to shimmy your way out of this one. Just be very careful 
have a steady hand and you can use your other hand of course to help you lift it off and onto a serving plate and here we go that's the finished product now this cake is frozen right so we just glazed a frozen cake and as tempting as it is to just go ahead and eat this i'm gonna wait a couple of hours put this in the fridge so that it softens up to a rather nice and soft consistency and let me show you what that will look like because i think this is something that people don't show you when they're mirror glazing you don't really see the textures after it's dripped the textures when you eat it you just see when people are glazing right so i wanted to really take you through the journey of mirror glazing here and here is my beautiful entreme after just sitting in the fridge for a few hours i can cut it quite easily and you can see that the mirror glaze is super shiny so nothing really happened i couldn't tell you the difference between that time when i glazed it and now that it's been sitting for hours in the fridge it looks exactly the same to me and another thing that you don't see in glazing videos is the actual consistency and texture of the glaze and i just thought i'd dip my finger onto this cake and show you that it's really soft it's not what you would imagine it's really delicious and it's a beautiful way to present your desserts thanks everyone for watching as usual don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more thank you and i'll see you next time